Hey there everyone, Russ Hamilton here. Once again, I've got another great video for you brought to you by Guardian RFID. So anyway, we're going to get right into this. This whole video, it's about escapes. You know, every time an escape happens um, in our line of work, we get blamed for it. Guess why we get blamed? Because we're at fault one way or another, whether it's at the tactical level or whether it's at the policy and procedure level, something somewhere along the way failed. At least that's my take on it. So let's start right out. Let's take a look at probably one of the most exciting escapes that you'll ever see. Here we go. So yeah, we're back. And yes, I left you hanging. Watch to the end if you want to see what else is going on there. So anyway, uh, just to talk more about our responsibilities to stop, prevent, and chase after people if they do manage to escape. You know, with us, uh, you know, public safety, it's job one. There's no reason for us to exist if we're not doing public safety. So I'm going to talk to you about probably the worst uh, escape uh, that I ever heard of. That I learned about in the academy when I was with CDCR. <coughs> anyway, this particular escape starts with a man named Kevin Cooper. Now, Kevin Cooper, who had several AKAs and so forth, um, he was from Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, he had a laundry list of felonies, including burglary and the rape of a minor. Um, he also had managed to escape from uh, custodial settings at least 11 different times while he was in Pennsylvania. He made it out to California, where he did even more burglaries, and that ended up, of course, in trouble with him and the law, and he ended up getting sentenced and being at CIM in California. So while he was at CIM on June the 2nd, 1983, I believe it was, he managed to escape. Well, it wasn't that big of a deal uh, for him to escape because he was in minimum custody. He managed to go out through a place that wasn't really uh, patrolled or watched over that much. He made it through a hole that was either in the fence or that he cut. And anyway, um, he made it out. Making it out, he managed to enter a family's house where he killed four people inside that house, the Ryan family, um, and uh, also a neighbor that was staying with them. There was one survivor that was the couple's uh, young son. Uh, he did have his throat slit, and all of that, uh, you know, managed to needlessly say, give some horrible publicity to California Department of Corrections, and rightfully so. Now, this guy today, you know, he's this cause celeb because people say that he didn't do it, um, they, you know, rally around him and so forth, uh, no matter the amount of completely overwhelming evidence. But what I hearken back to is safety is job one with this. This should have never happened. And it happened at a lot of different levels, right? First of all, a guy with 11 escapes, you know, from custody who has the rape of a minor, multiple burglaries on his record, he should have never been uh, you know, at that level there. So I don't know who, why, or how that ball was dropped, but we have to do better than that on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're going to go to the next little clip that I've got for you and just check this out. This is uh, really an unusual escape attempt, but just, you know, get back at me. Tell me what you think. Yeah, so it's a 
Qual a célula? V7. So yeah, that's some uh, real thinking outside the box there, isn't it? Uh, you know, having a mask smuggled in and taking the place of your daughter. And I mean, from a distance, could definitely uh, fake a person out. This is why, though, that we have to make sure about what we do in corrections, make sure that, you know, we're crossing all of our T's, dotting all of our I's and investigating those things. These guys down there in Brazil, they caught it. The guy didn't make it out. But my question is, why didn't they catch that mask on the way in? Where did that come from? There was a breakdown. Whatever their particular policies, procedures, gut instinct or whatever, they managed to mitigate that this time. So who knows? So now we're going to go on to another quick little one and just think about where the breakdowns in this one occurs at uh, inside of a sally port. So many bad things happen inside sally ports. But uh, anyway, you'll see, or at least you should be able to figure out what went wrong in this one. All right. So as they come into view here, just watch in the lower right hand as it comes into port, Sally Port. And you see the bus park there and they're getting ready to put them on board. And you'll see the last group of the females coming down here as they come into the red arrows they disappear under the bus. All right. So in that situation there, don't know why he wasn't watching well enough. Don't know why they didn't mirror the underneath of the bus. Don't know why they didn't make sure that their manifest was correct. Lots, lots of mistakes here. You're going to see the rest of it as they're going to load the rest of these individuals onto the bus. And then the bus is going to pull out and then eventually i'll just tell you to skip ahead to the part they are captured uh but the fact is is they could have made it out bad things could have happened to them they could have done bad things to other people and you're just going to watch as the bus rolls right out of the sally port here so just looking at that i mean did, was someone at fault? Yeah, absolutely. Especially at whatever that uh, tactical level was. How can you drive a bus out of a sally port and not know who's on it? Not know, hey, we're missing somebody here. How can you drive a bus outside a sally port when you haven't checked the undercarriage, when you haven't made sure that the rest of the sally port is intact so that you are absolutely 100% secure with everyone that's on the inside of the bus? nothing on the underside of the bus, nothing hiding out in the sally port that can get out that door, and then you're ready to go. Here, they just went through the motions of being secure, and obviously that's why people made it out. Thank goodness that this didn't end up as deadly as some other ones along the way. So what can we actually do to prevent escapes, right? Number one, all right. So number one's easy, count living, breathing flesh. How many times do you see this kind of thing happen that I'm pulling up in front of you right now? This was in New Jersey where someone puts a dummy in a bed. Don't do that. Don't count that dummy. Make sure that that guy is breathing or at least make sure that if he's not breathing, that it's a real body. Uh, these are the kind of things that, you know, gosh, it grabs national headlines all the time when we do silly stuff like that. So make your rounds, number one. Count living, breathing flesh, all right? The rest of everything else that we do all harkens back to good policy and procedure. Especially like you'll see, man, sally port after sally port after sally port, where guys make breakouts from that. And the tragedy that you saw there, uh, you know, do the things to make sure that your, uh, that your equipment is functioning properly, that your uh, inmate is well secured, do all of that stuff play the what if game all the time. And when you find a problem with your security, uh, shoot it up to the upper management, you know, make sure that they're aware that we do have a concern here and it needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, everyone is on the same team here and we need to work cohesively to uh, be able to mitigate the bad things that can happen. So, that's just a little bit of what it takes um, to be able to make sure that you're going to go home safe, that the public is going to stay safe, 
that our inmates are safe as well. And I'm going to leave it to the rest of that great helicopter escape video that was going on. But think about this. Even there, there were mistakes by staff or administration that allowed those guys to get themselves into that position, whether it was a failure of intelligence or whether it was a failure of them being able to get to that yard, um, the failure perhaps to not be able to have a really good policy in place with regards to how do you deal with a helicopter. We had it. I mean, we knew that we could uh, shoot people that were moving towards uh, an aircraft that had landed. Um, so, you know, is that the right answer? That was in Canada, so I'm thinking maybe not, but you need to have something you can fall back on. Hey, this is Russ Hamilton. I hope you guys view this as a wake-up call. I hope that you'll think about your own policies and procedure. Everyone, stay safe.